here with Jamie and Joe Dubuque, the uh, first woman and first man of New Jersey wrestling. All right, maybe not, but close to it. Um, we are family. I mean, yeah. as a family, you guys have a tremendous amount of wrestling experience. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about being a parent of a wrestler. Um, can you both give us a little bit for people who don't know? These guys have been wrestlers and around wrestling and commentating in wrestling and coaching wrestling for a long time. Can you give us a little bit of a bio before we jump into why, to help people understand why you might be qualified to talk about raising a yeah. wrestler? So, well, first off, I want to thank you, Mike, for having us on. This is pretty cool. Um, pretty cool for me just to be able to share this type of interview with my wife. Um, you know, she's been in this game for a long time. So, to kind of share our experiences is, is pretty cool. Um, just to kind of give you a quick rundown of, of my life in wrestling, uh, it started when I was 12 or 13. I was in sixth grade. Uh, that was the first time I, I started wrestling. Uh, it brought me to uh, wrestling in New Jersey. And, you know, I was a two-time state champ. Um, it then took me to Indiana University, where I won a couple of national titles. and. Uh, met this lovely woman on the on my right, um, and now I coach at Princeton University. I've been here nine years. Uh, I've been in coaching for God, fourteen years or fifteen years. Um, so now I'll turn it over to Jamie, and she can kind of give you her uh, her experiences with wrestling. Uh, so I transitioned into wrestling um, at the end of high school. I was a basketball player, and then. The sport, um, I didn't grow, so the sport outgrew me in more ways than one. So um, one day I had an opportunity to come to a call-out meeting, and um, that was basically it for me. So then I joined wrestling, and you know, I think back to the times where I was ready to quit really early on and couldn't tell if I was sweating or crying or both during the practices and stuff. And I never could have imagined that gutting it out in a basement of a high school was going to lead to me, you know, meeting the person I ended up marrying and, you know, becoming a part of wrestling. And, um, you know, there's, there's a connection with wrestling that you never get to sever yourself from. So now I try to enjoy it in all the ways that I can. And I get to be a coach through the youth uh, wrestling program at Princeton. And then I also get to announce um, college matches and now some women's wrestling matches. Got it. So, like maybe the law, the most amount of couple wrestling connection of, of any couple your age in the country. <laughs> Not that you're old, that. Joe, but the kids tell me you're, you're getting sore in the room. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so I, I know that you have a son, it's Chase, right? I've seen the video of him making tackle on a football game. Um, it, was there any doubt that he was going to be a wrestler? Uh, so there was no doubt that he was going to try it. Like that was definitely something like he's definitely going to be exposed to this sport, uh, just because of, again, all the, all the things, all the experiences it, it's given me and Jamie, um, we wanted to, we wanted him to at least try it out and see if he did like it. Uh, but we did talk and say, Hey, if he says he doesn't like wrestling, like I'm not, this is not the sport to force somebody uh, yeah. into doing, yeah. um, because it, it, I mean, it, it takes, it's, it's tough. I mean, it's the toughest. So unless you're all in, you know, both physically, mentally, and emotionally, um, this is probably one of the worst sports you can do. So, um, but, but him and Sienna were definitely going to be exposed to it. And I mean, again, like I'm a wrestling coach, you're going to be around it. Like you so I, I figured either way, he was probably going to want to get in, but, you know, we, we definitely tried it. Yeah, we didn't rush him at all. Um, you know, it came a lot with him rolling around on the, on the mat in the rooms. And, you know, it's funny to watch a guy who uh, becomes an All-American in Nationals and, you know, either splits his head open or splits somebody else's head open. And then three weeks after Nationals pops in the room and rolls around with our, you know, our little kid at the time. And even with, you know, fresh scars still. Yeah. And so Chase was exposed to the sport from such an early age, which we've been lucky about too, because I think that 
yes, we knew he was going to try wrestling, but I don't know if we really imagined how much of an impact the rest of the sport would have on him, whether it's the parents that are involved in the programs, the recruits families and getting to know them and him getting an opportunity, especially now at Princeton, to be around some of the smartest, most well-mannered, most influential, you know, young men in the country. I mean, it's it's been great. So we knew we wanted to expose him to that, but it's just paid us back tenfold. Now, Jamie, did you guys agree on the introduction to wrestling? Like the formal introduction besides being in the practice room? I mean, I think that we were good with him not competing right away that we wanted him to just get exposed to it um and then once chase was ready to compete a little bit i think what was he like eight or nine uh yeah he was, he was actually almost 10 yeah um and we wanted to you know slow play it and give him an opportunity the i think one of the great things about letting your kid wrestle tournaments when they're young or younger is that there are more than one match in a day so if your kid loses that first one, you get to run it back and try to try to win and come back. So they get that opportunity to experience victory even after a loss. Whereas with a lot of other sports, it's one and done for the day and it can break a younger kid. So I think that introducing him a little later to tournaments was definitely a, a dual decision for both of us. Um, I think that I underestimated how quickly I would find myself getting competitive with it because I slide in there like a like I'm coaching or filming and then I turn around and I'm like all right Chase come here do you need water and he comes to get water in the morning and I'm like you can't have this this is for winners you need to go back out and do your job yep and so, I gotta try that one <laughs> Wait, yeah, you can't have uh, the water this is for winners <laughs> I'm gonna use that um, water for winners uh just to also like with with that like again I, I've been around the sport a long time and I've seen I've seen youth wrestlers who are who are amazing uh, and never did anything because again I think the the push the push and the motivation was coming from the wrong place. Um, I think wrestling again going back to just kind of it being a really hard sport. You have to be self motivated and you have to want to do it, right? Uh, yeah. And I think if your if your kid is the driving force. Um, if, if he's like, Hey, I want to go to this tournament. I want to go here. I, I want to go to practice. I want to do more. I want to you know, watch film and I want to do all these things. Then he's going to have a successful career or he's going to just find success in wrestling where if I'm dragging him and pulling him and saying, you got to do this and you got to do that. And, and this is what you're doing. This, you know, you have to win and, and blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, then it's going to be a short road. Um, so I, and I was talking, I would tell her this. Because again, I've experienced that. You know, my I was fortunate. I I both my parents weren't ath, you know athletes. They had no idea really about wrestling, and they just did what I wanted. You know, it's like they would just take. Hey, oh, you know, when I started to get pretty good, I, I wanted to join a club. Okay, we'll take you to a club. Um, hey, I'm I'm starting to get better. I want to go to this national tournament in Ohio. Okay, we'll take you. Um, and, I, and, and I had a brother who was five years older than me and, and he would do the same things, you know, he would take me to practice and he would take, take me to these tournaments, but it was all driven by me. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I did have success, even though I wasn't, you know, a full year around wrestler, you know, I, I played football and I, I was a multi-sport athlete. So, but like when I was in wrestling, I was all in on wrestling. Like that's this is, I want to be the best and I want to continue to improve. So, and I'm just, again, telling her, I'm like, Hey, we, we have to slow play this. Like, again, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon, you know, like winning youth States is not the goal. You know, that's not, that's not what we're in it for. So, um, you know, and, and again, she didn't have those experiences. So she didn't really know, like she asked, like, why isn't he competing when he first started like six or seven? I'm like, Hey, like this, you know, this is, this is an important stage, you know, from seven to 10 is really important about him just, you know, learning to love the sport and having fun with it and creating his own competitive, um, you know, attitude and his persona and just what he wants to do within this sport. So, you know, just wanted to kind of speak to that because again, I, I, I've been in this a long time and I've seen par parents push push, 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 and they run their kids right out of the sport, uh, or they peter out and they burn out, and, yeah. and we all talk about that. I love how people say, like, there is no burnout. 
Like, no, there's burnout. You know, there's burnout because, again, if if it's coming from you, you're never going to burn out because you, you, you love the sport. But if somebody's pushing you and telling you what to do and you don't want to do it, then, again, that's where that's where you see, you know, wrestlers leave the sport. I've been so impressed, too, because I think that if you're on – I think now if you're a parent and you're on social media, especially, like, Twitter or Instagram – one thing that you'll see now, which is so great, is elite level wrestlers who have made it to the world team, who have made it to the Olympics, over and over again saying that they need to, that parents need to understand that nobody's cutting your kid a scholarship because they won a county tournament in sixth grade. Right. You know, and I think that that's been critical because of parents pushing their kids so hard now. And I get it. Like it's, I think that being a parent of a kid, especially one who's newer into the sport or has had a little bit of success, it's a dance with integrity. Like you're trying to teach your kid when it's important to gut things out, stick with things and do something that's hard or challenging that you're uncertain about. But then also knowing when that crosses the line into I'm pushing my kid into a space that they're not ready for either mentally, emotionally, or physically, because that's going to, that's going to create the conditions that are perfect for a burnout situation and your kid's going to have lost all of that time and confidence because you were the one who was, who was trying to draw your kid to the sport instead of letting your kid pave their way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've coached a long time and the number one predictor for kids quitting as soon as they get to college is they were pushed too hard. Then they get away and then they're, then they're, you know, partying down on freaking South Street or wherever they're at and, you know, they're out of school. And a um, couple couple questions here that just the points that you've brought up when you were talking about the, the developing the love of the sport at an early age before the competition. Um, does your wrestler resemble one of you? specifically like in a mental approach to the world or is it a combination um, Why don't you take this one? um so i am a certified head case okay. and i am very much somebody who can talk myself into being the best at something i'm also somebody who can talk myself into having the worst day ever in the sport and it could be something as simple as the wind changing directions that throws me off and i think that we have seen especially as Chase has gotten older, that he starts to get like that. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, and it's very, it's very particular for him with wrestling because he also does, um, like he's a runner and he plays football, but wrestling specifically, he can talk himself into having one of the best days ever, but we could be in the car 45 minutes away from the tournament and he could be saying to himself, I don't have a good feeling about this. And that, and, and that's it. So the whole day it's like, you're fighting the devil to, you know, to get him focused and to get him confident again. So I think that he gets that from me. I think that Joe and I are both confident, competitive people. So Chase has that. And I think that with that comes the beast of uncertainty sometimes and that you are your own worst enemy. I mean, I can honestly say that probably 98% of the matches that Chase has ever lost he could have won had he been in the right headspace. Right. And that's, but that's also true for 20 year old elite athletes. So it's just par for the course. I think when you are, when you're passionate and everything you do, it's easy for you to get in your own way sometimes. Yeah. And better to do it at a young age and try to figure it out than when you're 18 or, oh yeah, or, you know, that he, progression. He you, definitely, ha he definitely has a um, uh, little bit of, I guess my swagger or confidence um, when he's when he's really feeling good out there and and I do see you know I, when he's wrestling I do see myself out there you know a younger version of myself and and, it, and it's pretty cool you know again it's 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 cool to see him on this journey and just to go back like what Jamie was saying like with the the mental part of this sport um, I think it's hugely important uh, from a parent is to recognize that, like, when that happens, right? And we could actually go back to the exact moment where he was wrestling in his first state tournament that he wanted to wrestle in, and the kid was bigger than him, and he's like, oh, he's like, I think that's the guy I have to wrestle. 
Man, he's big. I think um, the kid had like a mohawk yeah, or like an like, Iowa and a, and like uh, singlet. And yeah, he was like, like, like oh no, singlet. you yeah. got a cool singlet. I'm so, done. So, you know, at that point, I'm like, oh man, I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, we're in trouble. And so I'm just trying to kind of keep his keep his head head in a good place. Uh, and he went out there and he got pinned in like 30 seconds. Uh, and right when, when he was calmed down, you know, at first it's like, you can't tell him right away because again, they're, you know, it's not the right moment to, yeah. to tell him. Uh, but after the tournament, I specifically, you know, talked about that and saying, hey, half the battle is being mentally ready and, and being confident in your abilities, no matter who you're wrestling, right? It doesn't matter if they're bigger than you. It doesn't matter if they're, you know, um, wearing some crazy singlet or, you know, crazy shoes or whatever the case may be. I said, if you're in a, in a right uh, mindset and you're confident in your preparation, you go out there and you just wrestle hard, that anything can happen. You know, the cliche of, you know, anybody can win on any day. Sure. Uh, and he, I actually saw him start to kind of, you know, again, he's like, you see those these little developments throughout their career. Um, and then, you know, kind of re- or fast forward to, this past season, he wrestles the same kid and winds up beating him, you know? So it, it's, it's again, and, and he was totally confident and he didn't get rattled at any point. It was like, man, that was like, that was awesome, man. Mentally, you made a huge jump and, and that's almost way, that's almost more important than making the physical jumps of like learning new technique and things like that. If you can make jumps mentally, like you are, you're going to be in a really good position to to find a lot of a lot of success in the sport. I think the mental exposure too is what gives those kids, uh, and and then losing and then coming back and winning. I think that that gives them the confidence to apply the things that they're learning in the wrestling room at practices. You know what I mean? Like if you got a kid who doesn't believe that they're going to be able to do this, they're not going to be able to win. They're going to clam up right away, and you know they're gonna they're just going to try to to fight off the loss the whole time instead of going out there and trying the new technique, you know, and, and that's where I think you see a lot of coaches getting frustrated because you see the coaches saying to the kid, this, we went over that. We went over that situation in practice this week. That was the whole focus was how to fight off bottom and, you know, you got stuck. But if the kid isn't in the right space to try that and believe that they can execute, then they're not going to do the technique no matter how much you rehearse it in a, in a situation. Do you guys do any mindset or mental approach things? And first of all, before we even get there, are you the primary coaches You're, as a couple? No, she's not. She's not allowed in this corner. <laughs> only, only if I'm uh, not there. And it's funny because I, I did not want to be in this corner because at first I understood, you know, it doesn't matter how much I know in wrestling, I'm still dad and yeah. he still doesn't want to listen to me. Yep. So... And we're, we're fighting that battle all the time. You know, yeah. he's actually getting to the age now where if I do clinics and I do camps, I take him with me. You know, I take him with me. He's there. And, you know, he just always second guesses uh, or questions, you know, what I'm teaching or, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, like, what do I know? Like, what do I know? I'm just some stupid wrestling coach, you know? So, um, so in, in that aspect, like, at first, I was like, I don't think I should be in this corner. And then he told me he wanted me to be in this corner. Okay. So once he told me, he's like, because I wasn't, at first, I wasn't in this corner. You know, Coach Ayers was in it. Um, you weren't coaching yet, right? No, not in the very you beginning. Not in the very beginning. Yet. She wasn't coaching yet. Um, and so, again, I would have Coach Ayers. And I, it was funny because I would be in Chris's uh, son's corner, you know, yeah. Atticus. So, because Atticus wasn't listening to his dad. So, it was right. like, all right, we, we kind of, you know, did the flip-flop. And so, uh, so you know, it, in that regard, like, once he came to me and said, hey, dad, like, I want you, why aren't you in my corner? I want you to be in my corner. So, I was like, okay. And, but then I also had to recognize, like, my son and his personality and how he is and how I am. So, I know that he definitely wouldn't respond well to me being an absolute lunatic uh, in the corner. I think that would have, you know, fra- you know, got him all rattled. And, you know, I just don't think that was good for his wrestling. So, you know, 
obviously you see me in the corner, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not the most calm human being in the corner. I, I get a little bit of it, a little intense. So I, I really had to tone it down and just be a coach and just like coach, right? Just not let my emotions get involved and really just, you know, almost like it's a technique thing. Just yell out technique, yell out time, yell out where he is and things like that. Um, but we were actually in the same corner at States. All right, right? We yeah, were in the, we were same... in the same corner at States. And I remember that a guy walked by and his wife was walking behind him and holding like her son's sweats. And he looked back and he was like, you don't do that. Because I was sitting in the <laughs> corner with him, like ready to coach. But I feel like for me, I've taken on like the support role of, well, I can't even film. Like Joe always tells me, he's so stupid and doesn't work. <laughs> Joe tells me every time, can you just film while he's wrestling? Which just... Just to back up for a second, I think that one of the other things that's really important about Joe not always being in Chase's corner is that Chase isn't so reliant on him to be there because yep. so much of the time Joe can't be there because it's during the season. Sure. So if Chase every time he went to wrestle was totally reliant on Joe only being in that corner, it'd be a crapshoot every time, you know. And we saw that a little bit at the state a year and a half ago or two years yeah, ago, I guess. We saw that where um he really unraveled because he, he was wanting his dad to be there at States and Joe couldn't because it, I think EIW yeah. race. But um, Joe always says to me, can you just film? And I'll hold like an iPad and that's fine. But yeah. whatever no, happens. It's, it's down. It's down. <laughs> I I, I'm like watching her feet. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm like, hey, I'm in, you know, Iowa. I would love to see his match that he just had. And she's like, and the best thing is, I go, hey, can you send me a video? And she's like, I'm sorry. And then sends the video, and it's like, oh, like why didn't it send me? You know, like, the most important part, you're, like, over in the stands, or, you know, it's, it's up on the ceiling. Yeah. So uh, I'm just, I now, now other parents will, like, volunteer yeah. to film, and they'll sit down in the corner next to me. But I try to take on the role, I think, of if, you know, Chase is down by one, and there's 45 seconds left in a match. Again, that's where the mental thing comes in. He knows what to do. He can totally do what he needs to do to do well and, and come out on top. <laughs> Wait, why are you I'll do, I'll, um, I, I just, I could, because now I can picture you and what you're saying. And all you're screaming is, shoot, 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 shoot. You're down. You're losing. Shoot, shoot. I like to think that what I'm doing at those moments is saying, it's okay, you got this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's your version. Yeah. That's like a Rashomon thing. It's okay, you got this. Sounds very similar to set up the shot, take the shot. All right, yep. let's go. Let's yep. see it again. Nope, nope, you can't back out. 50 times. Or like Shoot. the ref at like a youth tournament will, uh, I think, make the wrong call. And I'm like, where's the challenge brick? And the other coach next to me is like, they're not doing challenge bricks. It's a youth <laughs> tournament. Uh, wow. Well, uh, I could dive down this road a little further, but I want to just get back to something else I was going to ask you. So you guys are in a really unique situation. You know, exposed to high level wrestling, you, your kids will be able to have like you know Division One room to be in. But if you were, you know, let's just say New England, like I coached in New England for a few years, we'll just say it's not fertile ground. Um, what works? Like, what do you? What are things that you think work for parents, and maybe things that don't work beyond what you've already talked about? In what regard? In regard to. One, trying to get your son or daughter to like the sport of wrestling. Two, hopefully be good at it. And three, you know, have lifelong learning from it. Wait, can I take this one? Yeah. Just, right, just so, that. So I'm from um, southeastern Indiana, and it is not like wrestling nation out there. You know, I mean, it's better now than it was, but it's still not a huge thing, um, which is funny because we're adjacent to Ohio. Yeah. And Ohio is a big wrestling state. But I I have seen, like, Joe went back to my old high school and ran, like, a free practice for the club at the high school, which was, I mean, it was all ages, but, like, it was run at my high school. And um, I, ironically, it was also run by one of my high school boyfriends, which was, like, a whole weird thing. And our kid ended up working out with his kid because they were the same size, which is the most Indiana thing that could possibly happen. So just wanted to tuck that in there. But the room, I mean, there was like a good amount of kids in the room, but some 
you stop and you're like, this is a two-time NCAA champ. He's a Division One college coach. He has sent guys to nationals. He's coached all Americans. There shouldn't be breathing room in that room. I mean, they should have to expand it out to the gym because it's so packed. So I think that parents really need to keep their ear to the ground and see what resources are available. And, you know, if you got to, if you got to hike 60 minutes or an hour and a half or two hours for your kid to do a, a whole day clinic with a, a wrestler who's made a world team or whatever, then that's what you need to do to get your kid exposed. Because what's going to be awesome is if, especially during the summer, you know, I'm going to use Pat Gorey as an example. You go to a clinic run by Pat Gorey during the summer. He's a guest clinician for the day. And then now because ESPN shows nationals and your kid that spring gets to watch Pat Glory at nationals. Remember that he's got a shirt or she's got a shirt signed by him. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that's going to build the fire and the love for it. Just like what we see with professional athletes in other sports and doing those single day clinics. And, you know, just to add on to the part about the women's wrestling, women elite female wrestlers are throwing themselves at youth wrestling clinics, trying to get days locked out so that they can help out for free or for like chump change, just to get girls exposed and in love with the sport. So, I mean, all over the country, there are resources available. Get yourself on forums, join the Facebook groups, see what single day events you have to expose your kids to wrestling. Things like Wrestle Like a Girl, who are hosting free beginner clinics and stuff, get yourself to those events, even if it's a couple hour drive, because it's that's going to be where you can really start to build the groundwork, even if your kid doesn't get to have that experience that a kid from New Jersey or PA might have. Yeah, I'll, uh, <clears throat> like what you said about getting, bringing them to events, um, you know, showing them the excitement of the sport. Uh, I think th those things are huge. Uh, if they're young, uh, five, six, seven, I think it's fine to start them in the sport. It's so critical to get them around good, passionate people. I think mean, that that's that is it's the good and the bad about our sport. We we think just because this guy was the best coach ever, you know, whatever he knows every wrestling move known to man, but he has absolutely no idea how to interact with a five year old. And he's, you know, you know, basically t telling them to be tough and all this other crap and, and showing them 3000 moves. Uh, it, it's like, that's not what we're, that's not what we need. You know, these, these kids who are just coming into the sport, again, they need to be around an energetic, passionate guy who knows, knows some wrestling, right? I think that at that point, it's like, just know, just show them the basics, right? Show them how to do a drop step, show them how to do a stand up. Show them how to run a half and and you know counter a half, uh, but also make 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 it so that practice is so fun, you know, like because of your personality, right? And I think that's something. It's like there's there's ways you can um, you can bring the toughness out of kids in a fun way, right? Making it like a joke, but then also kind of being like, hey, but I'm real, I'm serious, you know, like hey, you know, you should do this while joking around. Um, and I think that's something where I look at our Cubs program, which is five, six, and seven-year-olds, right? So just to rattle off the coaches from our, 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 Cubs, uh, our Cubs program, it's myself, it's Joe Jamison, who is the head coach at Ursinus. Who also was an elementary school teacher, who's yes. perfect for that age he is He is amazing. He's the same. Um, Sean Gray. Nate Jackson, Reese Humphrey, um, and then just within the area, right, just within the area, we had two D1 All-Americans. Uh, one was from Wyoming. He was just working at Princeton. He's like, oh, man, I just saw that you guys have this program. It's like, and then Ayers actually knew who he was. They were like talking. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember you. So he's in the room. Uh, we have another uh, D1 All-American. We have, we have another D1 uh, wrestlers. We have a couple of D1 wrestlers. I mean, these are the dads and the coaches at this practice, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but it, it means like the, the amount of knowledge we have means nothing. If we can't get these kids to enjoy that hour that they're in that room, you know, because if they don't enjoy it, they're gone. Yeah. It doesn't matter if we can show them the best single leg in the whole country. 
if they're if they're not having fun when they're younger, they're never coming back. So I think what we've done is we we make it exciting, we make it fun. You got to have a good personality. Like if you're starting up a, a youth program, you, it's so important to have somebody who is the the lead person again who can connect to these kids, right? And then it's like again you have stages, right? So you have your youth, right, which is the the Cubs, and then you have your other program, your rec program is probably up to eighth grade. That's where you can then start saying, okay, the coach has to definitely be a little bit better technically, still has to have that certain personality where, you know, you don't want to lose bodies, right? We're, our yeah. sport can't lose people, right? We got to continue to, to, you know, keep the people that are in the sport and, and continuing to elevate them. Uh, and then you got your high school coach where then now we can really start getting into, you know, this guy's just, he's, preaching toughness and he's you know great technically and he knows how to be a leader and things like that and it's like again there's different stages where i think you need different personalities and different people in each slot so i know that's a long-winded answer but i feel like uh, kindergarten through eighth grade you need to find a coach who's like a warm demander right like they the kid feels comfortable coming up to them and saying like coach i still don't know how to do this or or feeling comfortable saying can you show that again I still don't understand how. Can you show me one more time and not feel like the coach is going to lose it on them? But then also a coach who can say, you need to focus. We already talked about this. You know, eyes on me while I'm showing you this. So having that balance. And I think as a parent, you have to be willing to speed date some different programs. And if you go to one for a week or two and like it's just not gelling, you don't feel comfortable with the way that it's organized or whatever, then you walk. That's it. You walk out and you go somewhere else. And a lot of programs are offering free nights. And I would be willing yeah. to say that some of the best programs do offer those free introductory nights because they got nothing to hide. Yeah. They want the buy-in. So I think that, you know, if you there are some things to be leery of uh, when it comes to programs who want your money before your kids ever got a chance to step foot on the mat to see if it's a good fit. Uh, but I think that you, if you, especially if you live in an area that's conducive to that, that environment of having more than one place to try, Try it and know, know if your kid is at an age where they can handle one day a week, like our cub program is one day a week, it's on Saturdays and it's short time, or if they are a kid who can handle more than one day. So I think that as a parent, you just got to start using your judgment, but don't be a one and done family where you tried one place and it didn't work. And well, maybe when they get to high school, they'll like it. Couldn't agree more. Um, let's get you out of um, this long question. Anything that you've done as parents, you know, trying to help your wrestler get better, that in retrospect was probably a mistake and other people might think it probably looks like a good idea to do that you can help people get see around that corner? Um, <laughs> are we that I, I think we're the best. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, yo, high five oh, it. We made it. We made it. Um, honestly, I would say, like, for me personally, again, I, I've been in this sport a long time. I know what, what good wrestling is. It's like I find myself overanalyzing him a lot, technically, and then I just have to step back and be like, when the time is right, it's going to click. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't get frustrated at uh, – with him he's still 12 years old you know and and it's he's gonna you know it, i don't know when it's gonna happen but it's gonna click you know he's been exposed to so much uh you know wrestling and technique and it's like you know right now if you know some things are clicking and most things aren't and i just have to accept that because i want him to like get it right now you know get it get it get it like why are you hitting this I showed you that, you know, a billion times. And, but when, when I have to just kind of talk to myself and be like, Hey, like you're, you're, you're being that guy, you know, you're being, you're being that dad who's, you know, yelling at your kid in practice because he's not running, you know, a half the correct way or, or whatever, you know, whatever mm -hmm. technique we're talking about. Um, so um, I would say that's probably just me, you know, um, can I ask you a question? Just a, yeah. How old were you when it clicked? Uh, 
Well, yeah. Like, Would you say 20? <laughs> yeah, that's when you felt like you became coachable, right? Yeah, I mean, I. it's funny. In wrestling, like, I was never a very good wrestler. Like, when I look at my matches, I'm like, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Like, I did some, I did a few things good, uh, but, like, if anybody, re- like, saw me wrestle, they weren't like, oh, man, this kid's such a technician, you know? Like, he does, this, his technique is just flawless, and he goes, you know, he does so many things. It's like, I was pretty athletic. I was explosive. Um, and I worked really hard. And that was like, those were the things. And I, I really wanted to win. Like that was, that was yeah. my thing. So um, when it actually clicked, when I, I, I would say she's probably right. Like when I was in college, like wrestling wise, yeah. I started to really be like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm evolving as a wrestler. That doesn't mean like I was still learning new things in high school and I was still learning new things when I was in youth. Uh, and I always tried to do things, but it's funny because when you, when you're winning, you don't feel like you have to continue to evolve. Right. It's like, why, why add more, you know, tricks when I'm winning with what I got? Um, so, and, and it's funny because again, like when I did lose, those were like some of the best matches that I, I, I had because I, I evolved from that match. Mm-hmm. You know, I got better from those losses. So, um, yeah, I, I would say probably when I was in college is, is really when. How about Jamie? Um, so I would say that everything clicked for me when I um, hit a sweet double on Joe at a college <laughs> party and thought that I was doubling him onto a bed right after we first really started dating. <laughs> But I missed the bed completely because I had that like Coors Light energy in me. <laughs> and I doubled him over the bed and he hit his head on an end table. And I was like, damn, that was really good technique. And then he was like, get in the bed now. And I was like, but to reflect, it was pretty This is the PG bed. show, kids. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was one of the nicest doubles ever hit on me. All right. I'll, I'll give her that. The, okay. How soon was that after having met each other? I think that was probably within a couple of weeks. It was, yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty soon. Like, yeah, I, I would say, I would say it's probably like I think it was like two months in. in I, my I, defense, she wasn't, she wasn't double egging me like you know two weeks into it. In my defense, Brandon Becker, uh, who wrestled uh, at IU, also his brother was out to visit, uh, and they lived in the same house. And his brother encouraged me to take off and get a run, like a run start insecure. down a hallway. <laughs> so I turned that corner, and I'd already uh, run like a fifty meter dash, and I just, oh, it was sick. It was. That's it was. When it clicked for me. It was like a, a Nate Jackson cram. <laughs> a cram, a cram double. Cram it. Huh? Cram it. Yeah. All right. So I just want to parse one thing out so if it clicked for you guys after high school what does the average parent have to do so if that because i kind of believe that's when it clicks for most people right like most kids don't it doesn't click for them at 17 or 15 or 13 but what you talked about athleticism and desire to win are there other components that you can help instill in your athlete so Before I, it totally I mean, I, clicks. I think, I think we're also coming from a different time, right? Where uh, flow wrestling and other sure. wrestling, um, you know, channels and, channels and, and yeah, yeah. We're, we're so readily available, right? Yeah. Where, where Chase can watch, you know, the world championships <laughs> from, you know, 2018 and watch that whole, whole thing on his phone. And be exposed to the, mo- the the highest level of wrestling, where or grab like a Carrie Colot technique video out yeah. in our garage yeah. with yeah. a mat rolled out, and you're yeah. watching that, and so you don't yep. always just have to learn in the room or with your dad or whatever. So I actually I think now again I I went to a club, um, so like I was I was definitely exposed to high level wrestling, but again once I left the club, I wasn't like. You know, I wasn't dreaming about wrestling or I wasn't watching wrestling on my phone where these kids are doing that. Like these kids are probably on, you know, flow wrestling and and all these other channels where, you know, they're going on YouTube and they're just, you know, 
searching guys and, they're watching and watch, film. Yeah, they're you watching know, video. They're, and they're assessing and analyzing and they're saying something like, I know like with Big Ten Network, you know, you're watching a replay of like Penn State wrestle and you could pause it and go back as many times as you want. And it's really cool to have your kids sit next to you and watch somebody on, on an elite level hit something and your kid go, that's how I hit my single. Or, oh, I set my single up like yeah. that. And they get to see themselves yeah. reflected in yeah. that. This is, this is a great uh, kind of example. So uh, last year during, during one of our youth practices, uh, one, of our, one of our better wrestlers, his name is Morgan, he, um, he comes in and uh, we're wrestling live and he's doing, um, oh my God, what did he do that Bo Nickel did? Bo Nickel did something, I forget what he did. He like, uh, you know, three-quarter Nelson the kid or something like that, you know? And I'm yelling at this kid. I'm like, what are you doing? That's, you know, that's not what we're, you know, I, nobody's ever taught you how to do it. He's like, oh, I, was just, I, I saw Bo Nichols do it on the Big Ten Network. So I just, I thought I'd do it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, you're not doing that. And it's funny because like, again, but when, if he gets to that level, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. You know? And, it, you know, the, again, these kids, I think they're so, uh, the exposure they have and the, the the readiness and the availability of, of high level wrestling and technique, I think it's actually going to click sooner. And that's why you've seen like some of these youth kids. I'm like, holy crap! How yeah. these kids are hand fighting like college guys, and and they're hitting these these techniques that I didn't even know existed until I was in college. You know, so yeah. so I think uh, I think again, exposure kids to wrestling. Whether it's if you're in New Jersey, you bring them to a Princeton match, you bring them to a Rutgers match, you bring them to a Ryder match. If you're in Pennsylvania, there's a ton of colleges where you can go and see the best wrestling. Show them the environment that, like, hey, you know, if this is a goal, like, look what you could be, look what you could be wrestling in, you know. And, and but again, if they don't like it, then they don't like it. Uh, it's, it's funny though because I think similarly. It's, it, this is, again, where it's so difficult to manage that balance and to, you know, dance that line because I think something else that helps your kid hold on long enough for those things to click or to give them the emotional headspace to let those things click is making sure that they understand that wrestling is a part of their identity. It isn't their identity because then everything about them rides on the successes and the failures. Mm -hmm. And hopefully your kid is wrestling in a program that gives them a 50-50 ratio of wins and losses so that they can experience the successes and failures. Mm -hmm. But if your kid doesn't feel like they're well-rounded, that they have other talents and skills that are really important and are acknowledged regularly, if their parent is only ever posting on social media about their kid's wins and then goes radio silent when their kid gets an A on a test, or, you know, uh, get something that's hung up on a wall in school or whatever. If their parent only values when they win in wrestling, they will never have the headspace for things to click because they'll only feel like they're either the best or the worst. There's yeah. no dance there that happens. Yeah. Good information. Any other thoughts for parents out there? Wrestlers, kids, Princeton fans, New Jersey I, fans. I mean, honestly, like, that's our big thing. It's like, we can guide our kids, but we, we can't, we can't make them, you know, it's like, you can't make them into a champion. You can't make them into what they don't want to be. Right. right. You can, you can guide them and you can, and I, I tell my son all the time, it's like, Hey, I told you what's going to help you, you know, be successful in this sport. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Like, I'm not going to remind you to do your push ups. you know, on, you know, on every Tuesday or, or whatever, you know, whatever we have set up. It's like, I told you, hey, this is what you should do. You don't do it, it's on you. And that's it. So I think, again, um, it's, it's, their, it's their journey. You just got to be at walking a lot alongside them. And then along the way, you know, especially if you, if, if you have experience with this sport, you can kind of pinpoint – the times where they can make huge jumps, whether it's, um, you know, mentally, competitively, technically. And that's where, you, and, and it's almost like you step in and then you step right back out. Like I, I have to make sure like if I step in, I step in, I, I 
try and, you know, show him how we can improve in, in whatever area. And then I step right back out. And I say, all right, you know, now it's your, it's, it's up to you whether you're going to fix it or not. You know, like, it's like, we give you the ingredients, you know, we're not going to make it for you. I think, too, knowing, uh, just kind of adding on to that, knowing when your kid is most receptive to conversations around wrestling and, you know, is this, and it could vary from match to match or day to day, you know, but is your kid a mat side kid where it's okay to pull them right to the side of the mat after a tough loss and talk to them? Are they a bleacher kid where they need to get back to the bleachers first and just sit down? Are they a dashboard kid where you got to have the talk in the car on the way home? Yeah. Or are they like a day after kid? Right. You know, where they need some space from the loss before they can even process any of the feedback that you're going to give them. Um, you know, and sometimes is it a, let's just not talk about it, talk. You know, like, it's, we're not, we're going to, you know, like, um, you know, our son went, had a, had a great state tournament the first time he went and did not have a great state tournament the second time. And the decision was, we're going to leave and we're going to go get Taco Bell. And that was it. And we didn't talk about it. The only thing we talked about was whether or not he was getting two beef burrito supremes or one. You know, and, and that was it. We didn't talk about it again because it wasn't reflective of him as a wrestler. Yeah. It was, a, it was a, a bad storm brewing of Joe not being able to be there and him, you know, having some self-doubt. So sometimes it's not even time to have that conversation until it's that Saturday when they're showing a Big Ten Network match. And you're able to coach through and highlight things that that athlete is doing or highlight the loss that that athlete just faced and be like, see, elite athletes lose too. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I think that you just, you need to know your kid and know when your kid is most receptive to whatever you think you're going to bring in a conversation to them. One, and then one last thought from me. Uh, and this is something that. Is this indicative started. of your entire relationship, Jamie, where he's constantly getting the last word in? No, see, that's the whole thing. Joe, Joe no, I'm like, Houston. I never get the last. I never Houston. get the last. What are you kidding me? You've already. Uh, do you understand what I have to go through at home dual meets when I have the, you know. The PA announcer going after you? announcer making fun of me throughout the, the this very serious <laughs> dual meet that we need to win. All right. And so, okay. I'm, I'm going to take reason, this opportunity. I'm the reason this stands are filled. All right. Forget Colo. Forget Glory. <laughs> Forget the coaching staff yeah. in the wheelbarrow. It's me. My, this is this is my life. I'm sorry. Go, my life. Can you finish up so I can go to coach? All right, all right. So, uh, yeah, the last thing is, is you gotta let you you have to let your kids know that you love them. And like my like Jamie said, it's not tied to them winning and losing. Yeah. Right? It's like it doesn't matter what he does. He could get pinned in 12 seconds. He walks off the mat. I love you. You know. Hey, here's the, here's some things like again knowing that situation. If it's a situation where it needs to be addressed right away, or if it's a situation that we talk about in two hours, it doesn't matter. The first thing out of my mouth is "I love you." I love you, bud. You know, give them a hug, and then you know, once they know that, then they know that again. The all the pressure is not about winning and losing, right? It's not the, like again. That's what Jamie was talking about, like. If your kid, all your kid wants is for you to love them, and because the only time you show that you love them is when they win, then that's all they're going to be concerned with. And then they're going to be thinking about not losing because I don't want to disappoint my parents, and I don't want them to be mad at me, or I don't, I don't want them to love me any less. Yeah. It's like, you know, love your kid. And you have to understand, I think, as a parent, where how a child developmentally interprets the way that you talk to them and look at them after a match because it might you might be like oh yep. what are you talking about you know i love you but it's like yeah but you walked off in front of me yep. like yeah. you didn't even wait for me to get off the mat or like yeah but i saw you yell at that other coach or you yelled at the ref or whatever like your kid is going to read your body language to determine whether or not you still care about them after a match whether you say anything or not so you got to know yeah well I, if i yell at a ref that would make that Chase knows I love it. Well, if I say where's the bread, <laughs> you save all the yelling for Jamie. I thought no, that's yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a choking. That's the. Ch <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Well, well, I like this was fun, man. I appreciate you guys taking the time, and um, I hope. I mean, is there going to be a season this year? Well, I mean, that's the million dollar question. I mean, uh, as long as. Uh, 
from what they've told us, yes. Um, I don't know though. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I don't know. I, I really hope they they figure it out. I mean, if football can happen, I mean, wrestling can happen. You know, I mean, there's national tournaments going going on in high school. You know, left and right. Yeah. So it's like, just let us just let us wrestle a dual move. I hope so. All right, guys. I hope to see you at Jadwin or somewhere else. And I uh, appreciate the time. Thank uh, you thank so you. much.